Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. As uh, my guests take their seats, please give them another round of applause. Um, as you can see, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us on uh, this last panel session. But I do believe we have saved the best for last because this, of course, is what it's all about. It's about innovation and particularly finding innovation in this industry. And what are the challenges that we are facing today? What are the solutions to some of those challenges? And then perhaps, hopefully, we'll have some time for really looking in our crystal ball and working out what might be coming to save what, a lot of these problems and find those solutions to those problems. So again, gentlemen, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. And apologies that the day has run over slightly. Um, I'm going to. Uh, start with a really fundamental question, which I want to address uh, to Sheikh Mohammed Al Thani, which is, what do you think are the biggest priorities, the biggest problems that we're trying to solve at the moment? So today, uh, in the industry, a lot of challenges we are talking about. And today, when we talk about the, let's, for example, the topic we are talking about today is the ESG. So honestly, the environmental social governance that also being touched by is it has been uh, a booming topic today. And when we talk about the biggest challenges is about the data governance or data privacy for our customer. I'm going to tackle it from a customer perspective as well as from, let's say, investor or shareholders perspective. From a customer perspective is, you know, the data privacy with the open communication, the booming uh, of platforms and social media. People really very big concern about their data privacy and governance. That's one of the challenges that we are facing, or we have been facing today from part of the ASG uh, challenges. Uh, from uh, shareholders or investors always, they talk about the sustainability of your uh, corporate and how sustainable you are and how those investors can be really have that confidence to put investment in your company. And this is one of the biggest challenges how we really create a sustainability sustainability business sustainability uh, human capital as well who can really uh, lead the company in a very sustainable way so the, these challenges from my shareholders and customers are quite biggest challenges and we need to make sure that uh, from a governance let's say part of the ESG is a governance into the structural how the corporate is being governed structurally so how really a real and an adequate or adequate, sorry, adequate processes and procedures in a place to make sure all stakeholders' uh, benefits are really intact. This is this big challenges from a different perspective I would look at today we are facing in the, let's say, in telecom industry as well as other uh, verticals or industries. Sheikh Beda um, Al Khalifa, would you agree with that? And of course, what, what we've just heard is a, a, a very good summary of the issues that organizations are facing, the issues that customers are facing, whether it be your data protection, and then even wider global issues. Yes, uh, I totally agree with uh, what has been mentioned by Sheikh Mohammed. Uh, I think when we come and we talk about sustainability as a whole, uh, we talk about different aspects, aspects that are related to ESG, and there are other aspects that are related to the business uh, itself. Uh, we in, in the telecom industry, I think the current or traditional business model in telco is not sustainable. And that's why we see a lot of international and now major regional uh, telecom uh, uh, companies are venturing into a transformation uh, journey towards becoming more of a technology company. And with that, that means uh, building data centers, that means digital growth, expanding in the to, into the digital economy. And with that comes a number of other challenges. Uh, uh, data privacy is one, uh, uh, cybersecurity is one. Uh, so there are a lot of other aspects that needs to be taken into consideration. And we need to have the right framework to, to address them uh, uh, in, in a way that is uh, in compliance with governance standards and that is satisfying to both the customer and the shareholders. And Sheikh Talal Al Mamari, is that from your organization's perspective, is that how things look for you as well? Well, um, I think if, if we talk about the challenges, they vary in terms of magnitude and how they influence. 
the topic. The topic itself is not uh, new. It's uh, probably started in the 50s, 60s, people are talking about uh, ESG. But maybe it has been uh, polarized lately because of the E aspect, which is the climate change. And uh, even with that, there are different views on how uh, climate change is influencing uh, today and how it will influence uh, the future. So it's, it's definitely a, a, a journey. That journey uh, will require uh, a number of uh, uh, aspects, but I think most importantly is the level of awareness uh, within the organization. Without that, uh, you cannot actually start having a program that is in, uh, have the right influence and, and the right impact. The other aspect is you need a collaborative uh, uh, effort. And I, and I think without that, without the uh, adequate uh, incentives, because there are always these uh, you know, shuffling, if you will, priorities between uh, staying uh, competitive, uh, staying uh, profitable. At the same time, all of these uh, efforts uh, relating to uh, ESG are uh, transformational in nature, and their impact is uh, long term. So creating that balance will definitely require a higher level of uh, uh, collaboration, uh, a clear vision at uh, you know, a political aspect, because sometimes political will is, is a, another thing that can drag you uh, backward. So it's, it's uh, innovation as well. Uh, we need to be much more innovative in terms of uh, how do we uh, address uh, the, these uh, set of uh, challenges? Absolutely. Um, Abdullah Ankal, if I can come to you, it, what, what's very clear from everything we've heard is you've got the, the push and the pull, as you were saying. You know, we've got organizations wanting to do the right thing, but having a lot of different pressures coming from, from different angles. And then the world we, we find ourselves and consumers changing as well. Yeah, absolutely. I would fully agree with what has been said when it comes to the challenges. But if we look at it from the bright side, I mean, what we are seeing today and the next three days on the, on the massive development in the ICT, the technologies that we are seeing and the potential, we see a lot of hope, the digital transformation enabling the growth and the digital econo economy globally. I think what we need to focus on is to make sure that the uh, development in the digital economy achieves the equality, bridge the gap, uh, whether we talk about regions or across the industries. The World Economic Forum expects that the value added to the economy in the next decade globally, 70% of it will be enabled by digitally enabled business models. So if we think of this, of the current digital gap or divide between regions or, or businesses continue, we'll be having a lot of nations or people behind which is something that we should, we should be worried about and we should all work towards making sure that we, we unleash and gain the benefit of digital tr transformation for the best of the society, the environment, and the, and the uh, economy. Uh, I truly believe that the digital transformation enabled by, by the companies represented here in the panel uh, is a big solution for almost all of the 17 SDGs by the United Nations if we do the proper things on how do we get the best out of the digital enablement. Fadi, um, Farron, if I can bring you in. We've obviously, we've heard a lot about what the challenges are. This is a, 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 a huge subject matter, but from Ericsson's point of view, are you an optimist? Are you, do you lie awake in, at night worrying? <laughs> no, I mean, for sure. We are looking at how can we also support with solutions, right? So if I can be building on what Sheikh Talal was talking about, the environmental challenge. Uh, today, mobile networks are estimated to contribute to 0.2% of the worldwide emissions and 0.6% of usage of electricity. That might sound small, but globally, we're talking about some $25 billion of the spend yearly on electric costs, and as all, we all know, energy costs are only increasing now, especially in 2022 and the inflation we're seeing. So we've had a collaboration with all our colleagues here on the panel in terms of how can the industry bring about what we call breaking the energy curve. 
especially now that we are introducing 5G, considering the amount of traffic that this technology generates, we look at the average smartphone is now up to 15 gigabit per second. So 15 gigabytes, sorry. It is expanding a lot, could expand a lot if you don't do something about it. So in terms of the research we're doing, we're trying to develop products not only for 5G, but also for the classical radio, for the previous technologies that consume much less. We can tell you that in 5G, compared to the earliest generations that came out just in 2019, we're already de delivering 50% less energy consumption. And if you go beyond the product itself, uh, here at Leap, we are collaborating with STC and their booth in terms of how can you bring solar panels to actually effectively generate enough power for the site to be self-sustaining. This was difficult to do a few years back because at that time the equipment demanding much more energy and hence it wouldn't be economically viable. But with today's generation, actually the business case uh, much more sense and it contributes to ensure that we you know, lower the energy usage of these uh, mobile networks. Sabro, your thoughts about what you've heard so far? Well, I mean, <clears throat> the first thing, it's, uh, it's amazing to have a, a, a conference here in the Middle East talking about sustainability. Uh, it's fantastic. Maybe uh, it, it would have not happened. I mean, two, three years ago, have a COP27 in Egypt, COP28 in uh, UAE next year. I mean, there's a rise, uh, the importance of uh, uh, ESG in the agenda, and specifically, I would say, the climate change, because at the end, I would say, out of all the problems, this is, I mean, the one that is coming more and more important. I would say that the, the telco industry is uh, evolving fast uh, in trying to uh, reach that uh, um, uh, challenge. Even if it's 2% of the consumption, I think we all of us need to contribute. In the case of uh, Ian, I mean, we announced recently aggressive target to be a net zero, uh, have net zero emissions. Uh, in scale, uh, uh, the scale one and two uh, only in 2030, which is uh, seven years from here. It's a, it's a big challenge and it's a big uh, task, the one that we have put it um, on our side. I believe also that uh, it's critical because uh, you see that more and more we are uh, fighting for talent. We are looking for talent, we are looking for uh, young generations, and the young, generation, uh, the young generations are looking for companies that are uh, take care of ESG, take care of uh, sustainability. And if we don't do that, we will be, it will be very difficult for us to, to compete. Even today, even in the financial market, it seems that, I mean, if you are green, you are able to access to a better uh, rate. So I would say there is, no, uh, there is only one way, and it's uh, all of us to really put this on top of our agendas. And finally, I would say that um, just because the telco model is not so sustainable and all of us are moving towards a digital transformation and trying to find out other business models, there is an opportunity for us to work uh, towards other industries to help them to become sustainable, to create a sustainable practice, to tell them how they can be sustainable, to measure, I mean, the, 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 the different uh, uh, data points that they have and to be able to follow up. And this is one of the things that I believe is a great opportunity just not only to become sustainable as a company, but also to help others how to be sustainable. And, and um, Sheikh Ben Al-Khalifa, I saw, I saw you agreeing with, with Salvador on two points particularly, one about everybody looking for the skills and the, and the people who've, who've got the skills, and then his second point about not just being responsible for your own organization, but trying to help other organizations yes become more sustainable. Yes, yes. I completely uh, agree with that. It's, uh, it's an experience we have lived. Uh, we see now the, the, the talent pool uh, of, of younger, uh, skilled, uh, uh, potential employees. Uh, their behavior have changed. They're very aware of ESG uh, and, and particularly environmental issues. Uh, the value companies that take uh, environmental uh, initiatives seriously, they, uh, they actually, we've, we've seen now in interviews, they started asking questions, you know, about what the company is doing when it comes to environmental issues. They raise questions, us being in the telecom business, about, you know, the towers, the impact on the environment, what you're doing about energy, and, and, and so forth. So I think to be... Uh, uh, 
uh, an employer of choice. We really have to put uh, serious measures when it comes to sustainable T and ESG practices. Uh, I'll go to the second point where you mentioned that organizations also have a responsibility to support uh, uh, other organizations in terms of their sustainability uh, uh, initiatives. Uh, I'll give an example of as a receiver of, of such support and also the potential to give the same support to others. Uh, recently, with, uh, we have a very special relationship with Ericsson. We've been partners for, for uh, a long period uh, on the technical front. Uh, recently, about probably a year ago, we started also having talks about doing things together on the sustainability front. And they have very kind of advanced programs, especially when it comes to applying uh, a circular economy and to operation uh, in terms of uh, e uh, e recycling, e-waste, and so forth. Uh, and recently, we have a very interesting talk with one of their specialists and experts who gave us that kind of uh, 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 consultancy for free in terms of how we can apply that model and handling certain devices, technical devices, and we're implementing or we're aiming to implement that initiative uh, this year. Uh, similarly, we also have uh, a new products and a new solutions under one of our new Beyond companies that aims at providing or supporting governments with their e-government uh, initiatives and digital transactions that in turn will reduce the use of paper and of course reduce emission targets uh, 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 for, for governments and similar institutions uh, as well. And Sheikh Mohammed Al Thani, it's, it, it's very interesting to me listening to what some of the solutions are because some, so often it is a collaboration or a partnership and finding somebody or an organization that has what you don't have. So if you're a smaller organization, finding a bigger one. If you're a younger organization, finding a more experienced organization because experience can be very helpful but equally youth can be very helpful and I just wonder what collaborations or partnerships you've seen in this area. Yeah. So uh, yes, collaboration or let's say the partnership. Uh, for example, you know, we have the right experience, you know, uh, from let's say the size and the age of the organization we are or the industry we are having. However, you know, the, uh, my, my point is what I want to convey is when you, when you have a younger, uh, let's say, uh, mindset, I think uh, it's the more agility you have to move forward. Uh, I would uh, honestly echo what my colleague is saying here. So when you, when you talk about the talent, when you talk, let's say, uh, about uh, uh, initiatives uh, for digital, or let's say being part of when people are being employed, there should be a, a a size or let's say a type of orientation about what the corporate is doing in terms of uh, environmental or social, uh, uh, let's say, perspective. Uh, partnership or collaboration with government sector. So we talk about, uh, let's say, environmental working with the Ministry of Environment, you know, uh, zero carbon. Uh, th this type of partnership really helps uh, uh, as part of the solution. Awareness, mean, you know, making people, let's say, talking about going green and being a paperless uh, organization. This type of mindset needs really awareness, education, knowledge. Uh, then talking about, uh, let's say, a governance. We, we talked about an over-regulated uh, or over-regulation. I'm not talking about over under regulated regulations. I'm talking about a well-regulated market. So having, so it will really help how you govern your, uh, your organization by a very right practice. And be, or best of practice to be developed as a part of the solution to be having a sustainable uh, performance or sustainable corporate going forward. Um, Ab Abdur al Khani, I saw you agreeing with that. And, and obviously, from STC's perspective, you've done <coughs> a lot of collaborations and either given uh, experience and advice or learned from them. Yeah, absolutely. I think what's, what's good and unique about our the business that we are in is all what we do, if we do it, I think, in, in a responsible manner, is solving for a, a sustainability or an ESG issue. Uh, the core of our business is connecting people, making sure that people
people are having access to the information and to the services. The more we connect people, the more people get education, health, access to economy, the less mobility that they need to commute to get these services, and they can also uh, create their own uh, economy while at home. So we're lucky that we are an industry if we do it for the right reason of business, for the return of the shareholder. And at the same time, we could be doing it for fulfilling the responsibility toward our society, uh, environment, and economy. The dark side of it is we still have 2.7 billion people globally unconnected. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of development today on the ICT, people talking about AI, metaverse, and all of these things. But we shouldn't be ignoring the rest of the world who are not yet connected. Imagine if we manage as an industry to get them connected to the rest of the world, how much of a difference we'll be making to their lives, how much of a contribution that they will be contributing to the whole, uh, to the whole uh, globe. Adding to that, the education part of it. I do believe we have a strong opportunity that getting the best out of everybody on Earth, if they get educated on how to deal with the... Uh, with the digital uh, economy, how can they contribute with whatever knowledge, uh, skills, experience to the, to the whole economy? So yes, I, I do believe we have a large part. A lot of it will come from collaboration. I think collaboration between the industry players, collaboration within the whole ecosystem with, with the vendors, as well as with the regulators who should be incentivizing and stimulating good initiatives towards the, the, the society and the economy. Absolutely. So just picking up on that point, um, clearly we have the digital divide where we have people who haven't got access um, to new technologies and, and new media. We have the education, lack of education, even if they've got access to the technology, they might not have the education to be able to be useful or to use it. And then, of course, we have whose responsibility are these things because we can all talk all day and all night but if politicians and regulators aren't doing their bit then that divide um, and that lack of skill is going to continue correct uh, look I, th I think the uh, industry telecom specifically have played a major role in uh, influencing <coughs> and bridging that uh, digital gap I have to say and uh, we, uh, although, you know, maybe there are short memories when it comes to this industry because of regulation, etc. but during the uh, two years, uh, heavy two years of COVID, uh, we, we've seen how the industry played a major role to provide tools, means, and way for uh, the overall society, not only in terms of uh, connectivity, but keeping economies, uh, uh, you know, uh, rolling and uh, keeping society uh, connected. And there were a number of initiatives that were focused specifically to help uh, uh, the health system, for example, uh, because it was under uh, crisis. Technology provided uh, during that time have helped uh, uh, maintain uh, uh, you know, a satisfactory level of, of uh, service level uh, within the health industry. Uh, as well as education. Uh, education was uh, continuous. We were able to provide many initiatives across uh, the, the, the spectrum when it comes to uh, education. So definitely the industry has played a, a major role in that. But is there a room uh, for improvement? Globally, yes, definitely there, there, there is. And I believe with technologies such as uh, uh, 5G, although it is a little bit demanding when it comes to uh, energy, but it provides uh, for tools and means to bridging uh, those uh, digital uh, gaps, if you will. And uh, also, some of these applications are used uh, in a, for sustainable uh, projects, uh, not only with, with governments, uh, but also uh, you know, with communities. Uh, you, you're talking about IoT or 5G, and you, you couple this with solutions that can make sustainable uh, communities or uh, cities. So there, there, there are many aspects in which we can uh, play a role there. Savra, I want to pick up on 
cities, which was just mentioned. And obviously, we've talked about 5G. We haven't really talked about AI. Um, but just looking towards the future and the solutions for sustainability, where do cities sit in that? And where would I, AI sit in that? <clears throat> well, um, I believe uh, we are in the right moment at the right time, I would say. I mean, technology is coming here to help uh, us to uh, provide uh, all type of uh, smart solutions for cities that should allow us to be more sustainable and to create a lot of uh, savings in terms of energy. And we have already demonstrated that. I mean, from um, uh, energy saving uh, managing or smart uh, solution managing bu uh, buildings towards uh, solutions for um, uh, smart lighting, waste management systems, fleet management solutions. I mean, if you just com put it all together and you collect all this data and you use AI, that it will allow us you to predict what's going to happen and create, I mean, automation. What you're going to do is to enhance dramatically the service to the cities and at the same time become more sustainable. So I would say technology is here. It's already proof. I think we, a lot of us are already in that specific industry and we're going to see more and more of the telcos working on that specific space, on, I mean, the, the digital part of the telcos to help the countries and the cities and the districts to become uh, fully sustainable and to reduce dramatically the, the consumption of energy. And we haven't, we, we've touched on the pandemic in the last few years and the global situation, but Fadi, as you look at things now, as fr from a sustainability and innovation point of view, what difference did the lockdowns and the pandemic make to that side of things? I think it was absolutely clear for the whole world that in order to continue and sustain your business, your education, and even your entertainment, you were absolutely over-relying on all types of communication infrastructure, both fixed and mobile. And uh, another you know, advantage of that is also that has boosted types of services that were existing but now are accelerating. Uh, most namely, we see, for instance, financial, mobile financial services getting a very big boom. It used to typically be in countries where the people will not really have bank accounts underserved, but we see that moving in, in countries where you have a very high penetration of banking services, but they feel that the comfort and the speed of use is, is knowledge. And uh, moving forward, uh, and basically also what Salvador was, was mentioning, we see a very big opportunity to be able to contribute from a mobile technology perspective to solve some of the challenges that the enterprise and the industries are seeing. In terms of the sustainability, everybody's focused on reducing waste, obviously, increasing productivity as a benefit, cutting costs as well. And although we've been having a lot of technologies over the past decades contributing to that, it's only today that you're able to scale from a connectivity perspective because with 5G, you finally have a technology that can handle very large bandwidth and throughput, but more importantly as well, ensure that due to the low latency in the networks, you can finally have a real-time monitoring and control of thousands and ten or tens of thousands of sensors, be it in a manufacturing plant, being in a port, being in a mine. And this is still at, I would say, early stages. So all the colleagues here, we are collaborating together, trying to build such a, uh, let's say, knowledge amongst the uh, industries and the enterprise, because we definitely believe it will benefit them a lot. I think that's what the next decade will, will bring for us. And Sheikh Mohammed, just, just picking up on Fadi's point, because the, the idea that you know, all these sensors that are sending all this data that presumably can reduce waste, which is one of the number one priorities, but all of that information will bring its own challenges with it. Yeah, this, uh, so it has its own challenges, but honestly, I would look at it from different perspective. How powerful is this? So when we talk about let's say, uh, for example, the pandemic, or let's say the tools that, the 5G, for example, the technology, I see it, it comes, yeah, it comes with, that's a breakthrough as, you know, how advanced is our technology? Talking about mobile or fix. It has its own challenges, yes, I understand, because 
sometimes we have the tools or let's say a technology that it really needs uh, uh, people to use it and or let's say mix the best use of it. We have a very powerful tools. We have, let's talk about AI you just mentioned, or let's say uh, machine learning. So these type of, of tools will be really helpful for our industry and for us also as a leaders in the industry to make the right decision and make the right decision in the right time. So it has its own challenges because as I said again, at the beginning we talked about the agility, we talked about the mindset and how we really need to be adaptable to these changes. It has its own challenges when you have this technology and you don't make that best use of it. These are the challenges when we see it from the breakthrough that we have or from technology talking about 5G or even the fix. And we saw it during the pandemic how really people changed dramatically. We talked about digital transformation for ages, but people are not eager to change unless it makes, it's inevitable to do that. These challenges are from a mindset and also from how we are being adaptive to the technology that we are having and how powerful the technology we are having today. We've only got a couple of minutes left, but before we finish, Sheikh Salah, what, what innovation or invention or new thing are you most excited about at the moment in this arena? Uh, well, uh, the, the technology always, uh, you know, surprises us with, with new uh, aspects, but I think Metaverse uh, today is, is a, a hype and a lot has been talked about its application. Maybe the, the focus has always been entertainment. Uh, like was, uh, Fadi was saying, during the pandemic, the focus was not uh, uh, definitely entertainment. There was a huge amount of data consumption relating to uh, entertainment, definitely. But if we use the metaverse today, one of the challenges that we've talked about is uh, you know, crossing these barriers of those who do not believe in the overall spectrum of ESG by uh, simulating, uh, you know, some of these solutions in the metaverse and seeing its impact, uh, uh, in, uh, at least in that virtual uh, uh, world. I think these capabilities, uh, although a little bit expensive uh, today, but I think they can prove to us uh, those, uh, the one, one thing, shifting minds, uh, transformation are always uh, a challenge, but showing it in, in, in a virtual world, seeing its impact, uh, whether plus or negative, in the metaverse probably will, will help. So that, that's one aspect that I think will definitely bring us many uh, opportunities uh, to see how we can uh, visualize the future going forward. And just, um, um, Sheikh Bader, what are you most excited about as far as innovations in sustainability? Uh, uh, to me, maybe it's a bit uh, personal in terms of uh, the, the first part of my career was in the aluminium industry. And uh, the second part is in uh, telecom and technology. Uh, I know we've talked about 5G, but I think the potential of 5G and what it can do has not been realized completely yet in terms of AI and, and what have you. Uh, I think it has great potential uh, in industry uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, automation, in terms of really kind of uh, digitizing some of the processes that will help a great deal. Uh, I'm talking about aluminum industry as an example, and either uh, controlling emissions, controlling waste, saving lives. Uh, uh, it's, it's not that bad, but it is, it is a kind of an industry that it comes with its own hazards, uh, improving efficiency, improving uh, productivity. And we've seen some small kind of uh, user cases uh, uh, with Ericsson and some of the potential uh, clients in the industry. And I think there's a lot to be done and a lot can happen. We have the tools, but it's still, uh, uh, we still need a bit of time to see it happening in, 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 in real terms. Well, I'm so delighted that we could end on a positive note. And of course, what is the ultimate form of sustainability? Saving lives. That's the ultimate yes. form of sustainability. So thank you so much. Um, we have come to the end of our time, but ladies and gentlemen, would you please give my esteemed guests a big round of applause and a show of appreciation. Thank you. Thank you.